Hey guys, so welcome back to yet another video. In this video, we'll be trying to solve the 287th lead code problem that is find the duplicate number. Okay, so given an array of integers nums containing n plus 1 integers where each integer is in the range 1 to n inclusive, there is only one duplicate number in nums. Return this duplicate number. Okay, so now here are the follow ups. How can we prove that at least one duplicate number must exist in nums? Can you solve the problem without modifying the array nums? Okay, so like we have to consider that the array nums is immutable and we cannot modify nums in any way. Then, can you solve the problem using only constant extra space? Which basically means like we can't use dictionaries, hash maps or hash sets or any things like those it has to be in constant space can you solve this problem with the runtime complexity less than o of n squared so like they basically like want us to do this in like o of um, n actually and yeah so what this means is like we can't sort the array or like like use any kind of sort to be like fair because like um, like sorting algorithms like take somewhere between o of n log n to o of n squared right like to execute so we can't use sort as well so now how do we like do this like the most optimal way without sorting and without using extra space so first let us like go through the different ways we can solve this okay so now here is like an example array one three four two two okay so now the naive solution would be to sort the array okay so now once we sort the array we would get something like one two two three four and from here like it's super easy to find the duplicate number all you have to do is you have to begin from the first index and check the element that comes before it and check if it's same or not so here for example i'll begin from two I'll be checking if 2 is equal to 1. It's not. Then I'll move forward. I'll go to this 2. I'll be checking if 2 is equal to 2. Now since 2 is equal to 2, of course 2 is a duplicate number, right? Okay. So now let's like go through the complexities of this. Now, the runtime complexity is going to be anywhere between big O of n log n or big O of n squared right because we are using sort so depending on the sort method I mean like depending upon the sorting method you use it can range anywhere between O of n log n and O of n squared okay now let's think about space uh, like the space complexity is like gonna be like a constant because like we are using no space right okay now let's move to the second method of solving this which is by using a dictionary okay so let's say i have a dictionary called d okay now so now i'll be like having a for loop going through every element of the array so now i'll be checking if the element is in the dictionary or not so now if it's not there in the dictionary i'll be adding it if it is there in the dictionary i know that it is the duplicate number so now one is not there in the dictionary like i'll just be adding one a value of true okay so like this will be like a hash set in ways then three is also not there in the dictionary i'll be adding three comma true even four is not there for um, colon true and even two is not there so two colon true when i come across the second um, two i know that two is already there in the hash map right so that means that two is the duplicate number right now let's think about the um, complexities now the runtime complexity is gonna be o of n because you're traversing through the array just once okay but the space complexity is like also gonna be o of n because we are like storing every element in our dictionary right so the like uh, the runtime complexity they wanted like um, it was o of n but the space complexity they wanted it was a constant space right but ours is not constant space so now how will you solve this in linear runtime complexity and constant space okay 
so now for this you will be using an algorithm okay now the name of the algorithm is going to be floyd's tortoise and hare okay now this is a cycle detection algorithm so now like i'll be like explaining like what they all mean okay now this entire algorithm is based on the knowledge of linked list okay so now how do you like convert an array into a linked list so now you have to like just follow one rule that rule is called index value index rule okay so now i'll be just noting down the indexes so it like becomes easier to understand okay zero one two three four so now we'll be beginning from the first index that is zero now zero has the element one so i'll be storing one in a list node okay because it's a linked list now then it says index value index so now the value of one will be pointing to the index one right now index one has a value of three so i'll be adding three over here now the value three will point to the index 3 index 3 has a value of 2 so 3 will be pointing to 2 right then the second um, I mean the value 2 will be pointing to the second index that is 4 so now we will be putting 4 over here now 4 I mean the value 4 will be pointing towards the index 4 which has the value of 2 right so we'll put two over here. So now as you guys can see, we came across every element of the array, right? So now, whoops, I mean for that to happen. Okay, so now from two, when we'll go on to the second index, we'll come across four again. But as you guys know, like we already came across four. So what we'll do is, we'll be making a cycle. So we'll be joining two to four. Okay, now this is a cycle. Now that's why it's called a cycle detection algorithm so now there will always be a cycle like in this question actually because they are saying the range of integers is from 1 to n inclusive so there will always be a cycle okay so now what do you have to do now you will be having two pointers to traverse through the array so now we'll be having the slow pointer and we'll be having the fast pointer now like you could like also name them as like the hair pointer and the tortoise pointer or whatever but like i'll like just be sticking on to slow and fast okay like like just so it's like simpler to understand so now the slow pointer will move by one step and the fast pointer will move by two steps okay so now by default both slow and fast pointers will be at the first element okay so now the slow pointer will move by one step over here and the fast pointer will move by two steps over here okay so now the slow pointer will be at three and the fast pointer will be at two okay now the slow pointer will again move by one step so now the, the slow pointer will be at two and the fast pointer will move by two steps so now it will be to 4 and to 2 so now, now the fast pointer will be at 2 and even the slow pointer will be at 2 even though they both are pointing towards the same element like they are not at the exact same spot okay so like we have to like keep on doing this till both of them like reaches the exact same spot so now let me like just erase this so like it's a bit easier to explain yeah all right so now the slow pointer will move by one step so now, now the slow pointer will move to four and the fast pointer will like move by two steps so basically from two to four and from four to two right so it will be at the exact same spot yeah so now again the slow pointer will move by one step and it will reach two so the fast pointer will move by two steps so it will come from two to four and from four to two again right so we are the same spot 
So now both the slow pointer and the fast pointer are at the same element or like at the same index you could say, right? So now right here the loop breaks, okay? Right here the loop breaks. So now what do we do? Now we will keep the fast pointer where it was, okay? And we'll relocate the slow pointer to the first element again. So now the slow pointer will, will be at the first element and the fast pointer will like remain over there itself. Okay. Now we'll move them both one by one. Okay. Like just by one step each. So now both the fast pointer and the slow pointer will be moving by one step. So now they both will be moving with the same speed. That is one. Okay. So the slow pointer will move one step forward to three the fast pointer will move to four right it's one step then the slow pointer will move to two and the fast pointer from four it will again move to two so it will be at the same spot so now we know that both the slow pointer and the fast pointer are pointing towards the same element right which means that that is the duplicate element and we can return two as the answer right because they're both pointing at two so now that's basically how you solve this problem. Hopefully you got the idea, all right? Now let's code the solution out. So now like just a warning here, like the code is like not at all intuitive, okay? So now the slow pointer will be equal to the fast pointer, which will begin from num zero, okay? So now I'll be creating an infinite loop for now. Now the slow pointer will be equal to nums of slow. It'll be moving by one index. And the fast pointer will be equal to nums of nums of fast. Okay, it'll be moving by two indexes. Okay, like it'll be moving by two steps, you could say. Now, if fast is equal to slow, you can just break the loop. Okay, because they both are pointing at the exact same spot. So now we have to reset the slow pointer towards the first index. So slow is equal to zero, right? So now while slow is not equal to zero because we want to keep on moving them till they are equal. Okay, like till slow is equal to fast. So now slow will be equal to nums of slow. Like they'll be moving by one point. Even fast will be moving by one point. Okay, now when they are equal, both slow and fast will be having the same value. So we can return slow in this case. Okay. Now, let's see if we get our answer. Let's run this. There you go, we get the answer. Let's submit. And there you go. It's very fast, okay? So now that's how we solve this problem. Hopefully you guys got the idea. If you have any doubts, do leave them in the comment section down below. And that's it for this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.